it's Celeste and welcome to my channel. My channel's all about cosplay! I teach you tutorials on how to make the outfit, how to do the makeup so you can become the character of your dreams. Today I'm dressed up as Ada Wong from the new Resident Evil 2 remake. Resident Evil 2 came out earlier this year around February and it's been a big hit. I absolutely love what they've done with the characters and how they look from their old pixelated models to now their super high-end 3D renders. I've always wanted to cosplay Ada Wong from Resident Evil 2, but you know, I couldn't really tell what her outfit was supposed to look like until this year. They changed her outfit to be this sexy red cocktail dress and to be more of an international spy versus just a random chick wandering the sewers. I really like the look and feel she gave off. She still retained the characteristics from the original Resident Evil 2 game. This video includes how to make the choker, the dress, and the gun holster. To finish the look, I made sure to have a little black strapped watch, a nice wig, and some tights, and don't forget, some black shoes. If you're new to my channel, make sure to click the red button down below so that you never miss out on any future cosplay content. This cosplay is very easy and it's beginner friendly. I think it's beginner friendly, so if you have any questions, make sure to ask me in the comments down below or hit me up on social media. Let's start the tutorial. For supplies on the choker, we're going to need a silver button with a black center just like that one, right there. Then we're also going to be needing a black ribbon of your choice and jump rings and a clasp. You'll need pliers for those and of course a sewing needle for the button. First, go ahead and measure out your length of your ribbon and then around your neck. Make sure it's comfortable and then cut that little point. Find the center of it by joining the ends together and putting a pin in the middle. This is where your new middle is going to be, where you sew your button. Take a needle and thread and begin working the back of the button to the front of the choker. Basically, go in and out of the ribbon first and then sew the button on through the loop until you are satisfied and that the button is secure on the choker. Now get out a lighter. For this video purposes, I'm going to be using a candle so you can see what I'm doing and go ahead and grab the ends of the ribbon and burn it. This is going to prevent it from fraying. I don't have any jewelry end clasps, so we're gonna do this instead. It's also the cheaper alternative. Now get out jump rings to attach the clasp and add to the other side. Now using needle nose pliers, go ahead and open one of the jump rings, feed it through the ribbon, and then add either extra jump rings or add the clasp. Do this for the other side. And now your choker is complete. Make sure your clasp works, by the way, otherwise it won't close. To start the gun holster off, I'm going to be using a strap I recycled from a broken purse. I threw away the purse and kept the scraps that I knew would be handy. Make sure to keep the adjuster in the front and put two of the rings in the back. This is really important because of how it looks in the in-game references. If you're going to be like me and recycle a strap, make sure your strap has two rings on it and that you can pull off the little tabs like this one right here. But if you only have a small D-ring, kind of like the other one on the other side, I'm going to be showing you how to fix that little problem. By the way, this is what your strap should be looking like right now for the right side of your cosplay. Hey guys, I just wanted to iterate in really quickly that I don't know how to make a gun holster, so you know what I did? I went shopping. Inside my shopping bag, I actually got a brand new belt. And the belt that I found was at my local thrift shop. So I'm going to actually use it inverted so it's black and matches my other straps that I have. Next, I actually found this cute little gun holster. It's like this toy holster 
I'm not going to be using the belt, but instead I will be using the holster itself. So I have to just undo this part here. The lady was laughing at me. She's like, are you going to be a cowboy? I'm like, yes, the cowboy. So I'm just going to have to like thing, but I don't know. So I might just have to paint it and then remove all these like little bits and bobbles. I did have to buy a brand new gun. I hope it fits the like little holster. If not, like I can always change it. And here we are. Oh, that's good. Okay, so I wonder if it'll fit. Oh look, it's it's perfect. So this is perfect for Ada. Now we just gotta construct the harness. Don't be afraid to check out your local thrift stores such as Goodwill or Red Cross or Salvation Army for used kids toys such as these for your cosplay props. It's definitely a nice little trick to have and I saved a lot of money versus buying a lot of brand new items. I realized it was going to be difficult removing the bits and bobbles and the rivets, so I'm just going to cover it with black foam. So I'm going to trace it out and then cut it out. Because there's this little slit on the side here for the gun to poke out, I'm going to make that same slit and just emulate it instead of fully covering it. So now I'm cutting that little tiny piece out as well. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just make sure it covers all of the bits and bobbles if your gun holster has these. Now combine the two together using the power of hot glue. Now take out the other belt for the gun holster. This belt needed to be thicker than the other belt and that's really why I chose this belt. I'm cutting where the gun holster ends, not where it begins. The front is okay to be a bit longer since it's like the holes part. So I'm taking the belt to the sewing machine and going very slowly with the power of editing it's sped up and I'm going to change the shape of the belt so it's not too big and I'm going to sew it off. Once it's sewed off, I'm then going to cut off the side pieces. This is because my belt is too big, but I wanted to make it smaller. It's easier to make things smaller than making it bigger. So go ahead and buy something that's too big and then make it smaller. So this is currently what everything looks like right now. We have the belt strap that looks like this, and we have the gun holster, and I still have the other belt strap pinned. So now we need to figure out a way to attach the gun holster to the large belt. I'm going to be using this universal adhesive to the tip end of the gun holster, far from where the actual handle is, and I'm going to be gluing it to the belt directly. And I used plenty of glue for this. Now I'm going to be using a heavy object and just weighing it down until the glue dries. While the glue is drying, now is a good time to attach the other belt to the large belt. To do this, I'm using the black foam scrap pieces from earlier and cutting out two pieces that are large enough to slide onto the belt. To do this, I laid the piece of foam over it, then folded it on top, marked it, and now I'll cut it out. Once I have it cut out, now I'm going to fold it over again and then make sure that all of the sides are even. So I'm going to mark it again, and then I'm going to fold it in half. Now that it's in half, I can make sure that both pieces are symmetrical. Go ahead and mark again, just so that you don't mess up. And now cut out the two pieces. Now that we have the two pieces cut out, make sure to taper their edges. What I mean tapering is make sure that the top part is wider than the bottom part. Do this for both sides of both little attachers. I guess sliders would be the correct way. So that it looks kind of like a trapezoid. So now grab the other strap, and I mean the little one. Because the little one does only have one little tab on the D-ring, we're going to have to make a second tab. So grab one of the scrap pieces of black foam, make sure it matches the same size as the other tab, and then cut it out. Now take out the super giant trapezoid foam pieces and then glue it onto the tabs of the small strap. Make sure to glue both the top and bottom, that way you can totally get it scrunched in and the hot glue will solidify it together so it won't go anywhere and fall apart. 
Now we just need to make sure that the gun holster front part where the gun goes in can attach to the belt and use the belt holes. So now we're going to be using some more of that black foam and we're going to be making a little tab. So cut out a nice rectangle and use some hot glue and directly glue it onto the gun holster starting from the front part. and carefully press it down. Make sure that you've added a lot of hot glue and if your rectangle is fairly long, make sure to add a lot of it on the inside. And now while the glue is still hot, slowly bend the foam back and this way we can add more to it so it will become stable. Get out that same piece of black foam and then cut a small square. Use the hot glue gun and begin gluing furiously on the back part of where you just joined the foam and the gun holster. Now fold it backwards. You want this to be able to stick out to the side so it can attach to the belt. Wait for it to cool and make sure it's fully bent. Once it's cooled, go ahead and attack it again with the glue gun. This time we're going to be gluing the small square to the gun holster and to this foam piece. This is going to help with the stability and making sure that it stays up correctly. If it's not staying correctly, go ahead and add more hot glue. Now I'm going to be using a needle, and I mean a pin really, and I'm going to be putting it in the center just so that the belt has something to actually hook onto, and then I'm going to be bending it. Also, since I have this tail bit extra, I'm going to fold it over to make a nice clean edge. Definitely double check that your needle does go through the belt holes. Now attack that small little foam piece again where the needle is with hot glue. This thing's gonna be a hot glue masterpiece. Make sure that there's enough of a little bit of the needle still sticking out in the front. And now cover it with a square piece of foam so it won't stab you. I wanted to show you what this little gun holster looks like right now before we add the final details and finishing touches. Ta-da! Gun holster! It looks pretty good and it's holding pretty well. I just need to add a few embellishments and then we can call it done. So first I'm going to cut a rather medium sized thin strap for the belt to be held down in the front part. So I'm going to cut out that strap. I'm going to attack it with hot glue pretty hard. Then fold the sides in. And then repeat this again on the other side. So repeat with hot glue and then fold it inward. Now add some hot glue to the little belt strappy thingy that has the pin on it at the bottom part. Now grab some googly eyes and some fairly medium sized ones at that. And grab some nail polish, preferably black and some silver. We're gonna start off with the black first. Begin painting the foam strips black. And I mean, don't do a good job at it either. What you wanna do is apply the nail polish and then go back and dab on top of it so that it gives a little bit of texture. As you know, the foam piece actually looks very matte and we don't want that because the actual belt pieces are very shiny. What the black nail polish is doing is giving that texture and helping it get that nice leather looking feel. Already you can tell the part that I did paint with the black nail polish has more personality than the black foam by itself. I only did this to the strap pieces. I did not do this to the actual gun holster itself because no one's going to see it if it's underneath my arm. Next we're going to be using the silver nail polish on three googly eyes. The reason why we're using googly eyes is because they have the perfect shape as the rivets on the back of Ada's gun holster. So carefully carefully paint them silver or do a terrible job like I am <laughs> and paint them silver. Once your silvery googly eyes are done drying, attach them to the sliding belt parts and the bottom part of the gun holster. I'm using this universal adhesive which is similar to E6000. 
Now carefully place the googly eyes in the center of the sliders and in the middle of the gun holster. If the glue is still wet and not dry, you can still shift your googly eyes in place where they need to be. That way you get the right spot and you don't have to regret it. And that is the finished gun holster! Now the last thing we need to do is make the red dress for Ada Wong. I'm going to be using stretch taffeta because it's stretchy and it looks like satin and it's great to work with. I don't have a pattern that I wanted to use for Ada Wong, but I decided to draft one. Drafting a pattern isn't hard as long as you have enough paper or enough material to work with. So with the power of my fingers, and ta-da, look, it's now a pattern and I messed up the newspaper. So make sure you have a little cut in the front for the V shape in the front and in the back. I'm going to be cutting on the fold and make sure it has some curves. Yay, this is what it looks like on the fabric. I hope you guys know what it looks like. So now we're just gonna cut it out. So when we're bringing it to the sewing machine, since it's on the fold, make sure you get it centered properly. And what we're gonna do is a ruffle effect. So to get this ruffle effect, you want to sew and close the front part and have your stitch length all the way extended as much as possible, and then sew it all the way down. Once you're at the edge of it, don't close your seams, but keep it open. That way you can pull it and scrunch it. Once you are done scrunching the front and back center seams, join the sides of the dress together. Do this by serging them together first. So this is currently what the dress looks like, and this is inside out so you can see the seams. At this point, you want to go ahead and try the dress on. Because of a handmade pattern, that doesn't guarantee the fit will be perfect. The dress is supposed to be scrunched, but flattering. So take in the sides that seem the biggest and baggiest. I'll do this when I add the scrunching to the sides. Now for the side seams, you want to change your sewing stitch to a zigzag stitch and put it to the longest length. You want to do this because you want to scrunch the fabric even harder on the sides to get that ruched look. Make sure to do this on both sides and then pull the string to ruffle it. This is the same method that we did for the front and the back center seam. Try your hardest to get it even on both sides. That way you don't have any leftover and hanging pieces in an uneven hem. Now serge your armholes and your neckline and your backline. Now sew your armholes together. Honestly, if your shoulder pieces don't fit, grab an extra pit of scrap fabric, sew it in between, and then attach it. I should have attached a little bit more, but I didn't think I needed it when I finished my product. If you have a longer torso than me, definitely add more room for your straps for your shoulders and your torso. Now begin hemming your entire armholes, your neckline, and your backline. Be careful not to stretch any of the fabric when you're sewing because you don't want to add extra give. If you add a lot of give, it's going to sit weird on your chest and it's going to sit weird on your back, so be careful. I'm also doing a one fold over hem. Now for the dress bottom hem, I'm just going to go ahead and serge it. And then after I serge it, I'm just going to repeat the same and just fold it once and sew it down. cosplay to create. I hope you guys really do try this one out and if you do try this cosplay make sure to tag me at Celeste Orchid so I can become a proud cosplay mama. 
I love seeing what other people work on and that's frankly a lot of my Instagram feed. I'm very lazy when it comes to posting. I guess that's a problem. <laughs> I just like liking other people's work instead of showcasing my own. Is that weird? I guess so. Anyways, make sure to click like if you like this video and check out what YouTube says you should be watching over here or check out what I think you should be watching over here. Thanks so much for Thanks so much for supporting my channel and watching this video. Stay inspired, be creative, and I will see you in a future video. Bye!